south. Uh, these trackers have a rotation angle from minus 45 to plus 45, so they will be moving in this oh, direction, moving. obviously. Okay. Well, follow so that means the sun is moving this way. Correct. So that is north, that's yeah. south, mm -hmm. east, west. So they will be. They will start like this in the morning, or sort of like this, and then they will move on throughout the day. You will actually every minute, every couple of minutes, they will move, and they just move, but they will move again a couple of minutes. So you will see and actually hear that. Um, what you see is modules. They're all physically the same. They have slightly different electrical char characteristics, and that's based on uh, a very simple explanation. So uh, module manufacturers, as they make progress with their quality processes and so on, they, they keep with the same uh, type of materials. They keep improving efficiencies, and they keep increasing those. So as they ship uh, products to a site, they don't just send you one piece of, like, one, one type of product, but they say, hey, three months from now, I get a better efficiency, so I'm going to ship you the one that's physically the same, but it, it delivers more power. And so this side, even if, that, if it doesn't look like that, it has four different types of panels. They're, again, all physically the same, but you have panels that are rated at 275, 275 watts, 280, 285, and 290. And so you need to be very careful when designing those, because when designing the system, because you're, you should try to m minimize how much you mix them for technical reasons uh, that would lead to some inefficiencies. So uh, you put them in, in, in strings, all of them together, and what you do is you actually connect them, and we can have a look and, and see how they're connected. They're uh, connected to each other in what we call strings. In this case, each string is made of 12 modules. So you can see how the module is connecting to the next one, to the next one, and so on and so forth. To String. So a string again has 12 modules. After after you have a string, you do connect uh, the strings to what we call a combiner box. And we'll see those later. They're uh, strategically located throughout the plant. Those combiner boxes kind of gather all the power from, from the different uh, uh, strings. And there's about 500 combiner boxes in this plant. Those combiner boxes have breakers, uh, switches, low voltage equipment, basically for safety reasons, for electrical uh, control and, and protection basically when you go from those combiner boxes there's again about 500 of those in the plant you uh, run less cables because you're actually uh, concentrating those cables on the combiner box and then you're taking uh, less cables out of that combiner box and bringing those to what we call inverter centers and if we go back uh, inverter centers inverter centers inverter where the inverters are or transformation centers we call them too so it's basically a skid which we will see in a minute uh, which has a number of inverters and a transformer. Collects all the information, uh, all the power, converts it on the inverter side from DC power to AC power, and then at the output of that, you step up the voltage uh, to minimize losses when transmitting the power throughout the plant, and then you bring it to the substation, which we have here, uh, and which we can visit later too. So there's 10 of those inverter centers distributed throughout the plant. You can see that the plant is not a perfect square, we wish, uh, so the design needs to take that into account. And, and so we have, uh, I believe, eight of the transformation centers are perfect squares, if you will. And there's a couple of them that are really uh, uh, with a knot shape. And those are the two there just because of the shape of the lamp. Um, can you say, do you know which, uh, which companies or companies supplied the solar modules? Yeah. So these were solar modules that... Our customer bought directly and gave us for installation. They were supplied by Trina Solar, who's one of the best known uh, module manufacturers in the world. Uh, the trackers are from a US company, probably the most recognized in the US. Uh, it's called Array Technologies. Uh, and then the electrical equipment is ABB, as you know. Uh, most of the other stuff, uh, cables are non ABB, but that's like a commodity that you can buy in the market. Steel, same thing for the piles. I was talking in the presentation now. There's about 20,000 of these piles. So there's uh, around 11 piles per tracker. Uh, each tracker, as you can see, is, uh, they're put in these rows, and so they have motors that move them around. Those motors have uh, really low consumption, so that's a question that comes mm -hmm. up pretty often. How about the consumption of the motors uh, when you're generating it? Each motor consumes about 350 kilowatts per megawatt per year, and that's like 0.001% of what the plant generates. So it's really insignificant, and nevertheless, it's taken into account when you model the system, 
and, and uh, get a numbers of what the production estimates are. You're taking weather data that's been available there for decades uh, by different governmental agencies, and you model that into uh, software programs, and you take all those losses into account. Too. So there, there's no... No concerns. There. Levels of uh, activities that we look at in, in solar when it comes to operations and maintenance. Uh, the first one is what I, could, I would call um, low skilled activities. Um, so, for instance, washing the modules, or if there's a different type of environment, maybe you need to cut the grass to keep it down and, and mm -hmm. prevent it from growing too much. Those are activities that can typically be done by, by local uh, companies because they're, they don't require skilled labor. Uh, and and Basically, side maintenance, you know, as you can see, it's very minimal. Washing the modules is something that you should do, depending on the environment, in this desert environment, probably twice a year. Uh, otherwise, really? you would increase losses because obviously you're mm -hmm. you're losing some efficiencies uh, based on dirt. But again, that's also and how do you wash them? Uh, well, there are some pressurized uh, machines that you can use. So you put the uh, tracker on a vertical position, yeah. and you use some pressurized water. It's special water in the sense that it's. Uh, demineralized water so that it doesn't damage the properties of the module, but it's it's very fairly standard, I would say. So you put the tractor in the right position and then you, you wash with that pressurized uh, water. Um, and that you can do, depending on the environment, again, like once, twice, maybe three times a year. In this case, the, the models were for twice a year. And that you, you put into the model too, so you know what losses you expect due to soiling of the modules and so on. That covers the first area of Are there some power plants like this in some environments where you don't wash them at all, or, uh, or at least less than I mean, once I, a year? I think it's always recommended to wash them at least once a year. Okay. Uh, you would need to have very, very clean environments. And sometimes they could exist in, in areas where you would have some uh, uh, trees around it and there's not so much dust. Maybe you can get away with that. I know on the residential level, I've seen analyses where it really just doesn't even make sense to go, go wash them. Right, but keep in mind at the residential level, you're talking about just a couple of modules, so it's very small. You're not going to gain that much uh, by washing. Here, 88,000 panels. If you wash one panel and you wash the 88,000 panels, you're going to see a big difference in it.